friends, as our peace con calls us together from our time of community conversation, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as our altar candles are lighted by Alana and Ariana. We come this day to 
choose life and leave behind all that hinders God's call and our response. For we are God's people, we are tasked with the way we live our lives, there is witness to the love of Jesus Christ. Friends, God's love has been shown to us in Jesus Christ, yet we sometimes live as if that made no difference. Let us pray together. Compassionate God, we confess the times when we have closed ourselves to you alone. We cling to our fear, our guilt, our worries, our prejudice, our insecurities, rather than allowing ourselves to be freed by your healing love. We live so often by taking each precious day for granted, and we fail to focus our priorities in ways that will make a difference in the world. Forgive us and give us courage to risk and trust in your call, living in the way of Christ. Amen. Friends, we have the assurance that we are indeed loved by God, and nothing can separate us from that love. We can begin again in this brand new day, and that is the good news of our faith. Let us sing our response in gratitude for Christ's love. Amen. sent me to proclaim, proclaim the release of captives and recovery of sight to those who cannot see, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of God's favor. And then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. May God bless these words to our hearing and all of you. Will you pray with me? Most holy God, may the words of my mouth, the reflections of all of our hearts, be faithful to these readings for this holy day. Amen. Today's headline on internet said, parents are not okay after three years of COVID. Perhaps not just parents. As we listen to the news and some of the predictions for 
more COVID and strains of flu that maybe we haven't even heard of, and all the hate crimes and the weather catastrophes, it seems like an act of courage just to keep on keeping on. At every turn, we need to dare to live with courage. Courage to live in a crazy, changing world. Courage to grow. Courage to be tough enough to keep going when the going gets tough. And I had to laugh in the midst of this week that seemed to confront courage in too many ways as I then came across a few pithy sayings which reminded me that we live in a time that demands courage just to stay on the journey of life. Sayings like, it takes courage to accept that some days you're the pigeon and some days you're the statue. statue. <laughs> or it takes courage to always keep your words soft and sweet just in case you have to eat them. <laughs> and it takes courage to deal with the reality that when everything's coming your way, you're in the wrong lane. <laughs> Dare to live with courage. So, how or where are you seeking courage for your lives? in these days. I once heard a preacher say, there's a power released to people who do what they have to do. You never know what you can do until you have to do it. God's power gives us courage that surprises us because we are able to do that which we never imagined was possible. By faith, I have learned that there is power available to us when we don't just sit around overwhelmed by what's happening, but rather when we say, with God's help, this is what I have to do. And as a mentor of mine told me, the moment we say we have to do it, God gives us the courage to move ahead. And those who do these things are as surprised as anybody that they could actually do it. I spent a long time talking this week with a woman who's in her mid-50s, and her husband is very, very ill. And she has to keep working, tries to hire home care, and handle all the responsibilities. And she said, I'm daring to do what I must do. And I said, that's one great definition of courage. And our strength. Our strength comes from God. Our strength comes from also from those who live on the journey in God's name. And courage grows as we are strengthened in our inner being with that power through God's Spirit. And, and we need each other in this process. I was reminded recently that courage and encourage are related words. Encourage is what we do with each other that helps us make courage possible. A friend of mine told me about her little boy who was learning how to swim. And he was so frightened to jump in the water and to go under. And as this mom stood in the water and the little guy kept trying to make that first jump, he called out to her and said, courage me, mommy, courage me. <laughs> what he needed most was simply to know that his mom would be right there saying, it's OK, I'm here with you. And indeed, this little one knew she would be supporting and strengthening him. That child's plea is truly the one we make of God and of each other. Courage us, indeed, dare us to live with courage. On this weekend that honors the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., my thoughts always go back to the time when I lived in a border state and civil rights for all of our country's citizens there was still a dream. And I kept praying that I would be able to serve God in some small way for justice and have the courage to do so. It was soon after the death of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that I grew in my understanding of how much work still needed to be done in the town where I lived. But what could I do as a teacher and a young mother with two small children to care for? I would hear stories of daring courage continually. A pastor I knew in a town close by stood up to the white citizens group that had been formed to fight a court's desegregation order. A meeting was called at the high school to discuss tactics for fighting 
the racial integration of the schools. And in a packed auditorium, speaker after speaker rose up and urged people to resist the court's order. <clears throat> and after some time had passed, this minister friend who had been given daring courage through Dr. King's witness and was highly respected, having served for many years in that community, he stood up to speak and he quietly said, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I've labored here for many years. I've baptized, preached to, and counseled with many in this room. I might have thought that my preaching of the gospel had done some good, but tonight I think differently. For those of you who are from my congregation, I'm hurt and ashamed of you. I expected more. And then he walked out of the room. And one by one, members of that church quietly left the room until the auditorium was only half full. No action was taken, and the schools integrated without incident. Here he was, this ordinary pastor, who had the courage of his faith and refused to give in to the pressure of culture to act on fear or hatred or ignorance. He was guided by the teachings and the love of Jesus Christ in his soul. He made a courageous stand which made a difference. Remembering that Jesus said, the Spirit of God is upon me. So many stories of courage continue to swirl all around me. I knew the power back in those days of Christ's love, that it could make a difference through every person's commitment. I didn't know much how much courage I had, though. But I knew that God would give me strength strength to do what I needed to do. If only I knew what that was. So I prayed, what could I do to help bring about more justice, knowing all too well the Micah scripture ingrained in my soul that says, what does God require of me but to do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with my God? And when the phone rang at home that day in Delaware, I knew, whether I had great courage or not, that I had to respond with a yes to the burning question that was being asked of me. Will you organize and run an interracial summer program at the church, bringing together children and youth and leaders from the black and white communities in the city? It was a really big yes, a daring yes, because integration was very, very far from reality. Opposition was strong and the work involved would be not only dangerous, but tremendous. So I went back to the words of Dr. King. Courage faces fear and thereby conquers it. In his other words, it said, the ultimate measure of a person is not where one stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where one stands for the right at times of challenge and controversy. By saying yes, I knew I would be saying to God and those around me, <clears throat> courage me. And here in this, our faith community, we are all called to courage one another. I know that for some of you who might be more introverted, it even takes courage to greet others after worship. I often <clears throat> can tell, tell the story about how years ago we had about 70 some folks come together and we took that personality test and we discovered that at least 65% of those taking the test were introverts. So going up to anyone to say, hi, my name is, this is very, very difficult. And if you're a newer member, I keep encouraging you to please feel free to do just that. And all of us introverts will do it as well. Indeed, whatever our fears or our potentials, whatever our challenges, we as a community of faith, living the love of Jesus Christ, whose spirit rests upon all of us, are called to courage and encourage each other, as together we are rooted and grounded in our faith. And so we live with all of the gifts that are given to us. And as God's people and as Christians, we have many opportunities to act with courage. 
talking one of our, with one of our teams a while back, he told me how it takes courage to still say no to alcohol and drugs when out with friends. And many of us know it takes courage to stand up when others are being treated unfairly or ridiculed. And the question is, can we dare to live with courage and refuse to gossip or to cheat? Or will we dare to covenant to work for peace with justice and to do what we have to do? Friends with courage, we dare to hold fast to our identity as God's people right here in this community and communion who seek to follow Jesus the Christ. Jesus is the person sent by God of peace and love and courage. The courage to say the Spirit of God rests upon me and may we have that courage as well. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. And let all the world rise as we sing, lift every voice and sing, written by James and
But I do, I do want to give a shout out to Bob and Ann. If, if you're here, I saw you there. If you stand up, we give great thanks. They, they don't want to be recognized, but um, stand up. They provided, um, that's what they did, but you know, with all the chaos and whatnot, and certainly people that are unhoused, there are others that bring food to them. And so they brought food to us. They uh, prepared a lovely spread of food um, for our dinner. So that was really uh, lovely, and they're so cheerful and all of that. So that worked. Oh, great. And then I do want to give a shout out. Um, as we learned in the evening, I mean, that was somewhat fun, right, and daunting at the same time, but we learned a lot. I and mean, we stood, we sat right here and we had three speakers. So I just want to um, let you know that we learned more about food insecurity, more about the unhoused, and the jobless. And so Rick Wilde from Crossroads did a fabulous uh, presentation and taught us that housing is most essential in Rhode Island and across um, the surrounding states. Um, but that is the first obstacle, before food, before a job, a place to sleep. Um, Larry and Ellen Hindle, I don't know if they're here today, but they're always amazing. I in the back there, they're modest perhaps. But they um, uh, spoke on behalf of doorways in Seekonk. And again, the kids learned about things that they didn't know, and that it was founded by them, a group of people in town um, in 2000. So um, and what we also learned is many of you helped out during COVID to get these meals or food to um, people that were in need. So a lot of learning there. And most important, relationship building. And then we had Mark Johnson, who I know is not here, but he was fabulous. Um, and he um, taught us about the SNAP program. Does anybody remember what SNAP stands for? Anybody? <laughs> Supplement Nutritional Assistance Program, which was the old food stamp program. So they learned the history from 1977. So lots of learning. Um, and loving thy neighbor, and I do feel that it's immersed in their heart, and I know that they will do more with the knowledge that they learn. So thank you, everyone. And they're continuing to take donations for Crossroads, and we made police blankets also for them. So um, continue if you want to um, give anything to them. And next week, they are going to Craigville. Sorry, so much to say in such a short amount of time. <laughs> um, but they thank you for all your donations. It's so abundant over there. But that particular event is also about the homeless down on the Cape, and we are collecting um, actual items. So there's two different things going on. They will be over in coffee hour if you want to make a donation, $10, $20, but all the funds will go to Crossroads. All right, you all may sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Give grateful thanks for our courageous young people and for their mentors, guides, and of course for their leader, Kristen. We continue to keep them in prayers, both with our acts of faith and our real prayers too. Um, we pray for all of those who are listed on our prayer concerns here in the church. We encourage everyone to go to that site, which. Donna updates several times a week, and if you just take a few minutes as you read the names on the prayer concerns and offer your gift of prayer, it means so much to everybody who needs them. And we please pray especially for Pat Smith's sister who is now in comfort care, and the family of Betty Patmod asks for special prayers as she is now in hospice. And. We pray especially for those who have lost loved ones, uh, memorial services, four of them this month. We pray for all those in need of strength and courage, both here in our faith community and all around the world. Let us gather our hearts now in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Most holy God of courage and strength, you set before us your vision for peace and justice and love and all the possibilities that are ours to release whatever binds or holds us captive. We pray and thank you for surrounding us with your loving presence in this very moment of time. We thank you for the gift of Jesus the Christ, the one who teaches and heals strengthens and challenges. We pray that you will release those places of pain for those who are suffering this day and be with all of those who are grieving. 
be with each one who needs your healing strength and comfort. We pray this day for all of those that we've named before you and all whom we lift up in our own hearts. Gracious God, we thank you for this time of growing, for this time of revealing ways that others might be able to see Christ within us and within our spirit. And we pray that you continue to guide us and empower us to search out our lives as Jesus calls us to do. Energize us in word and deed. Empower us to hold fast to commitments and to nurture one another and to be all that you've created us to be. That with you in our lives we will find the courage that though all things change, you are the same and you will fill us with your transforming love that will give us the power and the will to be gracious and forgiving and healing and blessing. And most holy God, we offer all of our prayers in the name of the Christ, who was and is and is to be, and who taught the followers when they pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. But I think you've heard a whole bunch of what they're doing. <laughs> so I'm 
So please go over to Coffee Hour. They'll be over there. And if you have extra cash in your pocket, donate. <laughs> there will be a candlelight music and prayer service on Tuesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. All are welcome and bring a friend. Please go over to Coffee Hour after the service to socialize and you will see Kristen setting up for her lock-in tonight for the 5th and 8th graders. I don't think they're sleeping out in tents though, right? No. <laughs> Take your bulletin home with you so you can check out all of our upcoming events. Enjoy your week, be safe, and please continue to reach out to others. And now we continue to give thanks for our guitar choir as they sing Shed the Thank you.
for these our offerings. We pray that they will be used here and throughout your world to show forth the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, we come now to the joyful feast of the people of God. All who seek to follow in the way of Christ's spirit are welcome and invited to this table. No one is ever excluded. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask now your blessing on this cup and this bread. And each one of us, as we receive in the holy name, of the one who reminds us that we are to be God's spirit in our world. Amen. Friends, we remember how on that night in the upper room Jesus took the bread and giving thanks blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this always, remembering me. Same manner also Jesus took the cup and giving thanks, blessed it, and said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is the covenant of love. Do this also, remembering me. Ministering now in Christ's name, we give you this cup and this bread, and all are welcome and in
Amen. Amen.